was interesting because then I had to um, uh, uh, work together with Kelvin to see what um, what that routine would look like for our kids and stuff. So that was really, really interesting. But, you know, it really worked out very well. And I got it. I got to give it to our inner inner wisdom. It really knows what it is that we need. So just from that one example, I wanted to illustrate that, you know, sometimes, you know, it, the, the answers may not be obvious, but when the time comes and it kind of shows itself, it's like, whoa, you're like, whoa, like, I wish I'd known that. So, so, so relationship to yourself, that is the first part of that relationship part. And then the second one that you want to check in with is relationship to your spouse and your partner. And you want to sit with that for a little bit and maybe take a couple of breaths in and out and just see what comes up. And if nothing comes up, wonderful. But if something does come up, acknowledge it, write it down, because I guarantee you it'll be something that you must at some point address. Little things usually add up. I mean, in our one of our previous episodes when we talked about relationships, right? You know, men are from Mars, women are women are from Venus and you know there small little misunderstandings or small little perspective you know differences you know can add up and they snowball into like a big mountainous volcanic eruption and usually that those are the ones the the big problems that um, are really hard to handle when they get to that big of an effect so um, so relationship to your spouse or your partner is the next part. And the third part is relationship to your children. And again, you know, for us, um, you, you want to just sit with that thought and you ask yourself, what would you have me know? And so once you're done with the relationship side of things, you want to move on to the next aspect. And for me, myself, I generally move into my health. So then I, I, I am a chiropractor, so I really um, kind of keep tabs on my health. <clears throat> and of course, with my history of, you know, chronic pain um, that really had no uh, formal diagnosis. And I suffered through many, many years of dealing with something that I didn't know. I just had to deal with it, you know, and, you know, dealing with depression, suicidal thoughts. I mean, you name it, you know, coming from that end of the spectrum like I value my health so much um, we're going to be dedicating like a whole wisdom mini series you know to to that aspect um, so we'll delve in a little bit more about um, sort of health and how you know how that wisdom um, can really change our lives uh, once you do have um, that ability to recognize it so for me health um, it was Again, small revelation, but I kind of knew deep down in my gut. Um, and uh, it's funny because this topic has been talked about, you know, with me and my girlfriends and just um, pretty much everybody that I talk to has the same problem. And that is that during this period of isolation, we have all at least gained in the very least five to 10 pounds of unwanted weight, if not more. Some of us have gained way more than that. And that is something that I find uh, to be very disturbing, because if you think about it over a period of time, like we don't know how long this lockdown is going to be for. And so the longer this becomes, the more we turn to obviously those comfort foods that aren't necessarily good for us. So I am guilty, 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 guilty. I have been uh, munching on chips, cookies. Bubble tea. Oh, my love. Bubble tea. Oh, my God. That's that's for another episode, man. I yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about bubble tea another time. But um, yeah, like and those are all really high cal caloric intake um, items. And I really um, that's something that, uh, again, it didn't even have to surface. I already knew even before asking the question of what would you have me know? Like I already knew that was going to be a problem. So that is definitely, and um, it, it's funny because I've made um, uh, a few of these comments to some of my uh, other friends and, and also my listeners um, that yes, we are going to start a challenge 
and we are going to get our weight in check and we are going to get our shapes back in gear and don't you worry because I am going to create a challenge and I'm going to challenge all of y'all to join me in that challenge and we are going to together lose those unwanted uh, newly gained inches so that we may lose more of those inches that it may have built up for many, 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 many years ago, you know, or from like a few childbirths. Okay. So definitely the health aspect is going to be a big one. Pretty much I'd say 99% of you who are going to try this exercise, something uh, along the lines of, I need to gain control of my weight and my binge eating of my junk food. Um, that's going to come up for you. And so the third aspect that I um, find is really important to focus on is finances. Finances um, ties in with our businesses, whether you are an employee or you have your own business or you are looking to start your own business. These are all things that are tied together. So I usually do finances and business, you know, sort of in a, I lump it together. But, you know, you can choose to separate it for I mean, for honestly, for this exercise, it can be tailored to whatever you like. This is just a framework so that you can get yourself started on this. And so finances, you know, I imagine that, you know, um, uh, a lot of people might get a lot of, you know, sort of inner wisdom coming up, you know, and you just have to beware that you're not letting stressful situations and challenges hijack your real, true inner wisdom that needs to surface, okay? So that inner voice should not be a panicking voice. This inner voice really just kind of tells it like it is. So once you've tried the exercise, you'll know what I mean, because it will like literally like you'll you'll get hijacked. I guarantee it. Because when I first started, you know, this exercise, I remember going it getting hijacked all the time. And I was like, what the heck? You know, and then I would kind of be on fight or flight mode and I would just respond to certain situations. But it really wasn't what I needed to do. So for me, um, finances, uh, you know, what it it didn't really surface until literally like last week. And I'll be honest with you, like I, I am an open book. Um, so there were a couple of uh, unexpected um, withdrawals uh, that came out of the, the bank account that I didn't expect. And so I'm, I'm kind of like when it comes to finances, I'm this kind of person who really likes to plan ahead. I don't like to be in the negatives. I don't like to owe money. And so when an unexpected expense comes out of my account that I did not account for, it does trigger me. And so when 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 those triggers came on, I remember my inner voice did have, you know, the hijacking that was happening and it did put me in fight or flight mode and I did panic. So I spent about two days literally just sitting there in fight or flight mode going, oh, my God, oh, my God, you know, like these two big bills that just came out of my account I didn't account for and with the limited income that's coming in right now this is an issue for me like I was like I don't know how we're gonna hold the front for you know the next two months and be be where we're at um, without having to dip into like credit lines and all that stuff like I, I I was starting to panic I was getting really really stressed out so what did I do Soon as, you know, I was starting to get hijacked, I knew that I was not in my prefrontal cortex anymore and I was in my amygdala. And I spoke to those structures when we talked about, um, I believe, episode uh, five. So um, have, have a little review of episode five um, if you didn't catch it, um, because it's really important to get right back into your prefrontal cortex. So soon as I felt like I was getting hijacked, I went into my keyword. And I went right back and I got myself back to my prefrontal cortex. And then I breath, took a few breaths to get, my, get, get me back into my inner voice. And for finances, literally, literally, like my inner voice said, do not do anything hastily. You must get rid of unnecessary expenses. Those expenses that are, that are wants and not needs. 
Now, on the surface, that sounds like a really simple answer, right? Well, I cannot tell you how accurate that was because it was literally, literally, literally like one day difference um, before the whole like, you know, knowing that my withdrawals and whatever, um, the day of that at night, I had actually put in a purchase for um, this uh, product that was going to actually help me keep better clinical notes at my clinic, which um, when I was transitioning into electronic medical records, it was a big challenge for me to keep up, you know, because I'm a pen and paper kind of person. But with pen and paper and, and uh, having to move into EMR, what happens is you have to, if you, if you write down pen and paper, you have to either scan it in or you have to type it in. You know, uh, um, so so you're with your patients and you write it down on pen and paper. And then so you'd have to almost transcribe it onto, you know, computer form. And yes, I've tried the why don't you type on a computer so that you don't have to like transcribe. But like I like I said, I'm a very traditional person. Like there's something about pen to paper and just my arms making those letters appear that is very um, important to me. Like I have tried. I got to say, like, I have tried as, as many solutions as you can think of, and it just has not worked for me. I've had an iPad, I've had a, another tablet, like, I've, I've had different apps, like, it just hasn't worked for me. And so this new product was supposed to be my savior. Now, this product was also um, priced at a premium. And so I had just placed an order, like, literally. So the day before I had this, you know, exercise uh, that I was going to do, you know, because previously I didn't have any concerns, you know, finances were comfortable. They were they were fine. Everything was balanced. I knew what was coming in. I knew what, you know, needed to go out. And soon as soon as, you know, the whole like sort of uh, crisis happened to me, um, I literally had um, my inner voice say, get rid of unnecessary um, expenses. and the first item that came to mind was this item. And I thought to myself, hmm, I wonder why, because this item was going to make my medical records, my clinical notes, uh, 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 much, much more smooth. It was going to make me a lot more accountable. It was gonna make just, just it was, it was gonna make the difference, like, you know, cause it, it automatically converted a lot of the things for me. So I didn't have to do extra work and I get to just write, you know, as I please. So um, this was, like I said, it was, there was a premium price tag to it. But I think what the biggest catch was, was that you have to pre-order this item. And this item was not going to be available until August. But you had to pay for it now, meaning that this lump sum, small lump sum of money was going to just sit in somebody else's bank account. Like during this crisis that I had just encountered of extra expenses being um, sort of uh, coming to be withdrawn and I had not planned for it. So naturally, um, my action item was to cancel this item. And I exactly did that. So as soon as I was done the exercise, boom, I went online and I canceled the order. And um, so I'm waiting for my refund now. So this is a very, very recent event that happened. Um, so I, I just wanted to kind of at least share with you that, you know, hey, you know, um, anything can happen. Um, but you got to you got you got to really focus in, you know, and your inner wisdom will tell you what the, the I guess what the next step could be for you. And so the last aspect which is something that honestly i don't think many people think about is what is the impact so so when you're asking your question right what is our impact on the world what is our way of giving back to the world um so when you're asking this question it, it's a lot broader in terms of its application because everybody, you know, comes from a different background and what they can offer to the world is unique to them. It is not that everybody offers the same things because if we did all or offer the same thing, I don't think we'd be individuals. We'd all be like clones of each other, right? So when I sat there and I 
ask myself that, what would you have me know?